I'm Gretchen Kohler and it is April here in the north country of northern New York which means that the birds are singing in the bush right outside my front window and it is literally snowing outside so I just threw another log in the fire and uh, let's play some music. The, uh, the tune of the month is The Waxwing and it's an air and also the title cut of my CD The Waxwing that I recorded with Daniel Kelly and I wanted to send out a shout out to Hannah Harvester, our artist who created this beautiful front cover. It's a portrait of my fiddle Herb and I think she did a beautiful job. If you're interested in the sheet music to hear the CD with the waxing wing on it, to see the rest of Hannah's artwork, she did portraits of me and Daniel, and to hear the story behind this tune, you can visit my blog at GretchenKohlerMusic.com. Look for the blog, The Waxwing. All right. This is an air, which means that it does not usually carry a steady tempo, which makes it hard to play with another person. So for teaching purposes, I'm going to give it a steady tempo. And ironically, you're going to learn it a little faster than you would actually play it. So you'll learn it faster, and then you'll slow it way, way down. So the opposite of the way you learn a reel. Um, also, this tune does some shifting. Um, don't let that be a deal breaker. You actually don't need to shift at all. The tune is just fine in first position. But this might give you an opportunity to crawl up the fingerboard a little bit and get to know the upper register just a little bit. All right, here we go, the wax one. Three, four. starting on a C natural, first phrase. Phrase two, starts on a C natural. Phrase three, starts on a C natural. starts on an E. And then that just goes right through again, it repeats. Um, all right, let me give you some ideas for the, these phrases. On the first phrase, I end on the note A, and I, you can go to an open A. And that's just fine, it sounds great. If you want to vibrate, you'd have to go to the fourth finger on the D. 
Now, I'm not always comfortable with my fourth finger vibrato. Sometimes it works great, other times it does not. So instead of going to a fourth finger, I actually replace the four with my second finger. I scoot up, and that way I can have a stronger finger doing that vibrato for such a long note. All right, so that's just an idea. Now, as far as the vibrato, some people prefer to have no vibrato in an air, and I like that too, but I tend to use, I like my vibrato. So I'm gonna use a vibrato that is, starts off sometimes with nothing, and then a lot, slow, and then fast, and I change the speed through one single note even. Um, the way I can do that is that I really took time when I was learning how to do vibrato. So if you're working with a teacher, they're probably going to tell you the same thing. Vibrato takes the time to develop. It's very easy to get a mosquito vibrato. <laughs> and it's very satisfying. You can do it right away. But what you really want to know is can you control it? So if you can slow it down and speed it up and you're in control of it, that's totally cool. But if you can't, you need to go back through and do the steps very slowly and get it. Um, get it solid so that you're in charge. Okay, so vibrato. Um, in the next phrase, phrase two of that A part, um, there's some snap rhythms where we've got a short note followed by a longer note. Um, right there, right there. And sometimes I really snap them hard with an accent and a lot of energy. And sometimes, again, since this is an air, we can be uh, flexible with the, the emotions. Sometimes I'm very gentle. And slower. So throughout the whole piece, if you run into a, a dotted rhythm like that, you can um, decide how you're going to approach it. Um, the next phrase, I think, ends where you have an opportunity to shift if you want it. Right there for the A. And then the last phrase, um, something that I like to do on the very last note is I really go, I trail out of it. So I lighten my pressure, I slow my bow, and then I let it go down the fingerboard. Not that far, <laughs> but you can let it lighten up a little bit. And that brings up a, a point. Usually we're trying to bow straight. We want our, our bow parallel to the bridge. Um, and in this type of a tune, it's very transparent. So you have to have good mechanics when you play. Um, I, I tend to use my whole bow. I just love, I love that, that contrast between playing jigs and reels where we use a little bit. So here's an exercise that you can do. Videotape yourself, and I want you to look at the joints in your arm. Your shoulder is just attached, so it's just moving because other things are moving. So forget about your shoulder, let it relax. When you do long bows, is your elbow opening and closing? So is it straight, is it bent? Is it straight, is it bent? Some people lock it into one place and they kind of swing up the shoulder. If you're doing that, you need to work on opening and closing your elbow. Let's say that's terrific. Move down, your wrist. Is your wrist straight or is it bending? You want the wrist to bend. We want that joint to be open. Think about painting and that your wrist is kind of leading. If you have a paintbrush in your hand, it's very, uh, Mr. Miyagi would uh, be proud of this exercise. So do a lot of that. All right, so your wrist is beautiful. And then you want your fingers. You want your fingers to be able to be flexible like this. Here we go. Um, if you can't do that, or if you're noticing that your hand, you've got a death grip on your bow, or bow grip, that's too bad we call it a grip, because we're not gripping our bow. We're just kind of holding on to it so it doesn't fall on the ground, but we're really doing bow strokes. That's a nice word. The bow, um, the bow hand is, is flexible. Um, cole is what you could look up if you're Googling things. Cole is a, is a bow stroke used in the classical world that we can really use in fiddling. And now they will give you tons of exercises to get that cole bowing and that will flex, make your fingers very flexible. All right, so super. That's the first part. Well, lots of things. Um, the B part, I'll just play it through. It has a long first and second ending so, so that you don't get lost. All right, second part starts on a C natural. Phrase two, I like to roll up. Phrase three. Now phrase four, this is where we would shift. We're out of fingers, so in order to reach the pitch, pitches, you have to get up there. But if you don't want to do that, I'll show you how to do it down, so no worries. If you want to shift, you're going to go to third position. First finger is on the A. I'll show you 
show you that again where I go down. So I'm first finger on the A. Now I'm going to shift down right here to the G natural. So I kind of scoot down in the middle of the phrase. If you don't want to go up there, if that's just not going to work for you, just do it down. Start on the A. And that will work just fine. In that particular spot, I tend to vary the rhythm when I'm playing it at, a, at an air tempo. So just notice that the rhythm might be a little bit different there, but at this speed, it's good to keep, kind of keep it as a J. All right, moving on. We're going to go back to the first phrase of the B part. Phrase two, I like to roll. This is new material, phrase three. We have a G natural to a D, E to a, and a C natural, and a B flat. C, G sharp. Okay, now on that very last spot, I like to shift there too. G natural with the first finger, and then that gives me my A that I can wiggle around with my second finger. Um, one technique that I use here is, is I, I, I can't slide very easily with all these tight half steps, but here's another way to do it. I've got my G sharp with my first finger, there it is. I'm going to drop my, my A down, my second finger A. Um, like it's just uh, parachuting out of the sky, it's sky jumping. It's coming down, it's on the string very lightly, very lightly, and then boom, it lands on the string. So it's coming vertically. So I'll show you how that sounds. And it gives the uh, illusion, the ear, ear illusion that you're sliding. So I was able to slide into the note by landing into it like that. Okay, so that's something you can try. Alrighty. Um, the biggest a piece of advice I can give you when you do an air is that you want to be emotional. Don't keep it steady tempo. Really milk some of those notes. Hang on them. Um, speed up, slow down, add a lot of energy, go to a low energy. Um, and whatever you do, do a little bit more of it. So if you're going to hold a note, hold it for an instant longer. If you're going to have a silence, have that silence be a little longer because we, uh, we, we tend not to do as much as we think we're doing. Our heart rate is up a little bit. We have a little bit of adrenaline. And when you listen back, sometimes you say, oh, I was really rushing through that. You can have the courage to sit on the notes that you want to sit on, and it'll probably be just great. So thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the wax wing. Subscribe if you enjoy videos like this, and I look forward to playing some music with you again. Thanks a lot. Thank you.